Okay, listen, we're almost done. The next step is application. And, and for me, this gets exciting. Application. We're going to be asking this question next is, how did it apply? What was the application to, to the original hearers or to the original recipients of, of the letter? And I'm going to go for a difficult one right now, okay? Uh, but bear with me. Because th these, these uh, forensic uh, explorations that we're marching through apply to all the books of the Bible. So let's, let's pick a hard one. Book of Judges. A book of Judges. Well, who's the author? We don't know. Uh, it's, it's either anonymous or it's spread out over. The authorship of the Book of Judges uh, is spread out uh, just under uh, a century of time. We know that the Book of Judges was written somewhere around uh, 1050 BC to 1000 BC. Uh, Book of Judges is an account of various judges that God called to preside over the nation of Israel at that time. It's a very diverse book. It's, it's actually extremely exciting, but it's a good one to ask this. What's the application? So the application to what was going on in the book of Judges for the nation of Israel was that it is a, uh, a compass. The application is, is that the book of Judges would be a great compass because you can see that as you're reading about a particular era of time under a particular judge that uh, God is doing certain things with the nation of Israel or with the, with the people of God. And that particular judge, look, here's one, the wild man, Samson. Samson was a judge, we forget that. We think Samson was, you know, this knucklehead bozo uh, he definitely had a problem with women. He was, a, he loved women, okay? Samson is a great example about a guy who knows God, but he's kind of a rebel. He's always getting in trouble. He's very, very uh, passionate about his conduct, which gets him into a lot of issues. But God called Samson from the womb, it says in the book of Judges, to be a judge of Israel. It's God's call. It's not yours, it's not mine, it's God's call. And so you've got this man, Samson. When we ask the question regarding the application, uh, we would look as to what was going on uh, then out of the book. And this is why God did this with those particular players, those particular characters in that particular time. Uh, Gideon out of the book of Judges. Deborah, we've all heard about Deborah. Where do we find her? The book of Judges. And she comes on the scene, for example. She comes on the scene in the book of Judges because the application is this. God was looking for someone to stand in the gap. And the nation had become so compromised, the times had become so weak. Uh, and here's Deborah, this woman of God, and she's got a warrior spirit. And she is not only a judge, but she is a battle commander. And I, I, I want to, listen, uh, we'll get into it soon, but man, that nation flourished under the, the leadership of Deborah. And uh, we need Deborahs today. I, I believe in any nation that's getting messed up like America, we need Deborahs today. The application was that God called this particular person at a particular time to speak, listen, and to do. Application has a lot uh, to do with the works, the doing of righteousness, the execution of the right thing. And so uh, application is all important about what happened back then. And of course, as I said, this is a great, great rule that applies to all portions of scripture. And so uh, let's jump ahead now to New Testament application to them then. The scandalous rumor that Mary is engaged to Joseph. There's a scandal going on up in, in Nazareth, that region of the Galilee. This young girl's pregnant and Joseph is freaking out because he loves her. He's supposed to have her put to death according to Mosaic law, but he's conflicted. And of course, the Christmas story is given. The announcement of the angel to Joseph, don't, don't divorce. Back in those days, 
engagements had to be divorced if you're gonna break it off. Don't do this to Mary. The advent of Christ, them having to uh, uh, go on a pilgrimage, they had to immigrate down south to Bethlehem. All of this regarding the application, all of this for what, to what? Book of Matthew over and over again says, and this was fulfilled as it was written, spoken by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall bring forth this child. He shall be, where's that come from? Book of Isaiah, being fulfilled in the book of Matthew. And you would stop and ask, how does this apply? Or how did it apply to them? And the mic drop is Herod says, what's going on about this baby being born? He turns to the Jewish leadership of Jerusalem, of the nation, and he says, hey, is there anything mentioned in your guys' Bible about the Messiah being born? Uh, anything about that? Go search and see. They go look and see. They find the answer in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. They go back to him and they say, yeah, hey, wow, the Messiah, the King of Israel is going to be, no doubt they were thinking, must have just been born in Bethlehem because Herod lights up. He goes bananas. All right, he's, he's all threatened and freaked out over this thing. Uh, the application to them then was the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. In fact, Jesus later on, 33 years later, will hold them accountable for knowing or not knowing. They, they were to know Bible prophecy, they didn't know it. This is a very important truth. The application to them then in their time frame is a great lesson for us. Why? Look, you're a very smart person if you can learn from the mistakes of others. <laughs> okay, think of that. It's one thing to learn from your own mistakes. You better, because they were painful. If you're really shrewd and wise about your own life, you don't have to go through grief if you look and learn from the grief others have gone through. This is awesome application. I'm going back to the past I'm getting into their culture, finding out when it was written, by whom, you know, to whom, what's going on in the dynamics, and I learn that Jesus held them accountable for recognizing the day of his arrival on Palm Sunday to the temple. They made a horrific mistake by approaching the Bible casually. I don't want to make that mistake. Thus, I learned from the application to them then. I hope that makes some sense. I hope that that helps you for what we're looking at in our closing uh, push on how to study the Bible personally in our day-to-day -day life.